He's satisfied that Joe requires medical help and makes an appointment for him at the mental hygiene clinic. Here, the preliminary work on Joe's case is handled by army psychologists and social workers. Then, Joe is interviewed by the psychiatrist in charge. Well, Joe, from what you told me, it looks as though you never really had a chance to grow up and develop. You always had to depend on your mother and father for reassurance. Now tell me, what happened on other occasions when you've been away from home? First time been away, sir. Never before? Not even for a weekend or even overnight? Well, except for the time. Yes. A couple of years ago, the company transferred me to St. Louis. What's the story on that, Joe? As soon as I got there, in fact, even before on the train, I began to feel lonely, blue. I was all alone. I got to feeling so jittery. Did you have crying spells then, too? Yes, sir. I felt so bad. There seemed no reason for living. You thought of doing something to yourself? Yes, sir. I even looked out of the window. We were on the 12th floor. I thought maybe I might go out. What happened after that? I just quit and came back home. Though Joe Smith doesn't realize it, he is receiving his first psychiatric treatment. Already, the doctor is helping him to see himself more clearly and to understand his deep feelings of fear and inadequacy. Joe learns that his case is not hopeless and that there is a real chance that he can change. Well, Joe, What's happened to you isn't strange or unusual. I've talked to lots of men with the same kind of trouble. But how is it you didn't mention any of this in your interview at the induction center? I want to be in the army, sir. I hate being like this. I want to be as good as all the other fellows. But look at me. I'm no good to myself or anybody else. But Joe Smith is better than he thinks, and the doctor tells him so. Joe wants to help himself, and that's half the battle. The psychiatrist arranges a talk with Joe's company commander. He explains to him that although Joe isn't cut out to be a combat soldier, he may still be of real value to the army in an environment more suited to his personality. Joe was reclassified to limited service as a company clerk, where he was able to use his skill as a stenographer and secretary. During many months of excellent service, Joe was promoted in rank and carried out a useful and important assignment in battalion headquarters. During this period, Joe saw the psychiatrist from time to time. And then one day, what I'd like to do is to get a transfer to some other post and start there from scratch. Do you really feel that you're ready to leave this place, Joe, and go somewhere where you don't know anyone, where you haven't any friends? Well, sir, I... I want to prove to myself that I can get along okay on my own. I... I think I can do it. Joe Smith's mental health actually improved in the Army. He developed an independence and maturity that he had never known in civilian life. But if his case had been handled badly, he would have become worse with the eventual outcome, hospitalization and discharge. The depressed sentry, too, showed marked improvement after transfer from his isolated post to duty as a weapons instructor. Again, appropriate environmental change in itself helped the patient to overcome his personality disturbance and to continue his service to the Army. But many more stubborn cases require hospitalization, some only for a short time, others for longer periods.
some men have to be separated from the service among these are the more severe psychoneurotics and the psychotics The men who finally go into battle are the cream of our young manhood. The weak have been eliminated. Those who remain have stood the test of months of strenuous training. Their average shades of gray, both physical and mental, are very light. Then the battle begins. As the fighting progresses, the number of neuropsychiatric breakdowns is multiplied many times. Remember young Bill Brown? You saw his mother tuck him into bed and kiss him goodnight when he was a little boy. He's become a BAR man in the rifle company, a tough, well-trained, experienced soldier. But he's been in combat for a solid year and pinned down by enemy fire for the past three days. He's had about four hours sleep out of 72, and he's down to his last few rounds of ammunition. How long can he last without cracking? Perhaps indefinitely. Perhaps for only a few minutes more. Even the toughest man may reach the breaking point. For in combat, emotional and physical stresses are enormously increased. The inner conflict between the soldier's pride, sense of duty and loyalty, his instinct of self-preservation, his natural fear of death and mutilation is greatly intensified. Add to this the weakening effect of physical exhaustion, and the setup is ideal for psychiatric breakdown. Yes, even such a healthy specimen as Bill Brown can be brought to the breaking point by the strain and tension of prolonged combat duty. For Bill Brown is a combat casualty, just as much as though he had been wounded by bullets or shell fragments. His is merely a different type of wound, requiring immediate and specialized treatment. Bill Brown is returned to a medical installation near the front lines for screening and treatment. One out of five combat casualties in World War II was a psychiatric case. At the clearing station, interviews with a division psychiatrist will determine the best treatment and disposition of Bill's case. <laughs> 